Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wellness by Design today. I'm your host, Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. And today we're talking about simple solutions so that you can live a, a, a healthy and a pain-free life. And I'm really excited to wel welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Ryan Wolfert. Welcome, Ryan. Uh, thanks for having me, Jane. I always love talking to you. I love talking to you too. We're kindred spirits, I think, because we are both passionate about helping people do these simple things that they can implement in their life to, to get well. So you're a chiropractor. You've got 22 plus years of experience. And um, I love that you are also a bio physics physician. We can talk about that in a little bit, about what that means. And also your mindset specialist. And I love that too, because I mean, you know, I know spiritual practices for years have told us that we've got to connect it all, right? We're not just like a separate pile of separateness in a physical body. We've got a mind, we've got a spirit, we've got, we're pulling it all together. So we're talking today about, um, how to implement simple everyday strategies uh, for health. So what exactly is health? How would you define health, Ryan? That's a great question. And I realize this, and I actually just sent an email earlier today about this because it was something that I got away from as far as uh, making it, I was trying to make it too complicated, trying to get people's attention, maybe too much with the, the flashy type uh, new thing that they got to try or therapy, but health is simple. And, you know, I'm going to take you back just a little bit, like growing up where I grew up in a small German Catholic farm town. My dad, you know, my dad's a carpenter, was a carpenter. My mom just did everything, jack of all trades. And it, it's funny how I, I looked at that and how it gets seeped into our experiences and what we think life should be like. And and health is one of those things. I saw that they worked hard, and if they wanted to to do you know do well for themselves and well for our, you know their kids, that they had to work hard. We have to work hard, and that you know it gets in our our mindset. So that's the approach that so many people take: is health has to be hard. Okay, so that's the first thing. Health doesn't have to be hard, but health, because what health actually is, it's our body's ability to function. Plain and simple. If our Love body, it, you know, our organs have to function, our tissues have to function the way that they were intended, our muscles, our joints. And if we can ensure, if we can make sure that these obstacles to our function is not hindered, or, or to make sure these obstacles aren't there, challenges are put down lower, well, then now our body can function at the level it's intended, then our health will rise. Our health will get upgraded. We will, again, we'll get into symptoms in a little bit, but, you know, health is not okay. It's not exactly being symptom free. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're pain free, there's a difference between like pain less and pain free. We talk a lot about becoming pain free, right, Jane? Yeah. And I believe, and that's a state of mind, that doesn't mean you're going to have aches and you're not going to have aches and pains because those are there for a reason to give you that signal that okay, something's not functioning correctly. And just because you have uh, symptoms here and there acutely doesn't mean you're not healthy. You might have an injury, you might have something like that, but you know, true health is your body's ability to function. And by your body, I mean your brain, all the organs, all your cells, all your, all your tissues. And we'll get into some different mm -hmm. simple solutions to uh, basically unlock that because that is, we have everything we need already inside of us to do that. The problem is that ability to function and be healthy gets interfered with because of the different physical, chemical, mental, emotional, spiritual stressors that we tend to put on our body at a too high a level. Ah, so good. So good. So simple. Because, I mean, really, our health is natural. Health is a natural state, right? And so these other different stressors that come in in lots of different forms basically block that but the body's ability to be healthy and so we need to allow it to heal so would you say it's like a process of allowing oh I, you said that perfectly 
we have to remove those blocks. We have to make sure those blocks and just we, we have our body's own, you know, the body has its own ability to heal. If you cut your hand, it will heal. Uh, you know, even if it's deep enough to where you have to put stitches on it, the stitches don't heal it. Your body heals it. Same thing. Your body knows how to breathe. It knows how to digest food. Or it, I should say this, it knows how to and it can do it, but it doesn't always with these functions with, you know, our breathing, our, you know, our bathroom, you know, going to the bathroom, our thinking, our eating, our digesting, our eliminating, all these things, our body knows how to do it, but that doesn't always mean it's done in the most effective way. Mm -hmm. It can get dysfunctional, as I know you know, especially with like breathing because of like you said, those stresses that we put on it, now it blocks our, our body's ability and our brain's ability to keep those functions in a functional state, essentially, mm -hmm. in a healthy state and allow it to heal. So yes, allow is the perfect word for it because we try to mask things, right? We try to mask our, Pain. our stress, <laughs> essentially, because yeah. our body gets a symptom and we think the symptom is actually the problem when in fact it reveals the problem. It's yeah. a manifestation of an underlying issue that, that is blocking our body's ability to heal. Now, if, you're, if you get far enough away from that health point, that optimal functioning point, you might need a little help to, to get back upstream, to, mm -hmm. to have a life preserver thrown to you. But you know, one of my things I say is all the time is be your own guarantee. Don't we, we you want to get to a point if you're not right now where you're not depending on drugs, on medications, on procedures, on hospitals? Because the more that you depend on those, the more you increase your chance of not living a long, healthy life not just a long life, but a healthy, active, fully functional life. So that's exactly but to answer your question. I've made it longer than it needed to be, but yes, allowing it to heal. I love what you said there and the simplicity of it. And you said something else that was really interesting, I thought, and something I believe in too, about letting your brain get involved. Because <laughs> it really is our brain that's running the body, right? And and when we get problems with that brain not working right, then uh, we, we can not have problems. And I, I love that analogy you used too about throwing the preservative. Like, you know, or life, the, the, the life float or whatever we call preserver. that thing. Preserver, yeah. Life preserver. Thank you. No, yeah. it wasn't preservative. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, you're not going to say to the person, let me teach you how to swim now, you know, when they're basically drowning. So, yeah, I mean, there may be things we need to do. Like initially, let's like, let's make sure you're safe first. But then, you know, over the long term, we're going to teach you to swim so that this doesn't happen again. Um, so that's really beautiful. So, Simple solutions. So where do you even begin, Ryan, with telling people simple? So what are the simple solutions? Because I know we got Google, we can we can find out anything now. But the problem is people are overwhelmed. So mm -hmm. how do you keep it simple for them? I always like to just uh, have different sayings that I for myself. And this is this is like my be your own guarantee ethos, BYOG. And these because these are I, I looked back and I looked at how people live and how to live and how to be healthy while you live and what, you know, our, our bodies are designed. I mean, this podcast is wellness by design. So we are designed to be healthy, mm -hmm. but things get in the way. So how can we maximize our body's functioning capabilities? So what are we doing on a day-to-day -day basis that is either helping us to get that function and health at a high level? And one of those things that we're, we're not. So I mentioned a few already, but eating, like, so for example, eat clean and detox daily. Again, these are all simple things that have a lot of different steps, but again, we're not going to overwhelm you with the steps. So right. eat clean. One of the big things I like to do is, and if anybody's been following me for any period of time, they know I love smoothies. You know, they probably got my superhuman brain shake recipes. And I, I love having smoothies because you can fit so many nutrients and, and, and vegetables and uh, herbs and spices in there too, and healthy fats. And it's so easy and simple to concoct and doing it the day before and having systems for that. 
and that's part of like eating clean and detox daily goes along together. But for example, a lot of people, I think I shouldn't say a lot, but many that I know do maybe a yearly you know, seven week or a seven day or 21 day detox. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying simply and consistently on a daily basis, do things that help detoxify the body. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're going to the bathroom at least once or twice a day. And by that, I mean, go and poop. You know, yeah. that's a function that our body does. And I, I don't know the stats on how many people are constant, the percentage of people who are constipated, but I know it's a lot. And those types of things lead us down those roads of depending on medication, depending on external things to help those out. Yeah. So what do you say? I mean, I, I work with people that have constipation issues too. And I mean, they'd love to go every day, but they just can't. So what do you say to those people? Well, I always look back, say, why can't you? Or, or you know, what I shouldn't say, I, in my mind, I'm like, what is not functioning correctly? And it might not be in the bowels. It might be something, again, well, you're not moving enough. You know, you're just not getting the movement. And that's another little uh Part of the ethos too is move often, move with again. That's what I would say. You're not maybe you're not moving as much as you should. Maybe you're another one. Stand tall. You know, is what are you? Your posture affects your 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 organ function, and that's part of that whole biophysics technique and and, and procedure and protocol that we use in our brick and mortar office, and it's correcting the posture because of how it has a wide ranging effects on not just your pain, your back pain or headaches, but also your organ function, mm -hmm. your breathing, right? That's another one, breathe light, breathe light and breathe free, mm -hmm. breathe long. It, so many of us are breathing too much in posture and breathing, they also go together. Your posture and spine affect your breathing, your breathing affects your posture and spine. Mm -hmm. So if we're in like a, slumped over posture like this, not moving, not standing tall. Again, I use these as like triggers for me, standing tall, uh, not breathing lightly. Well, now that's going to affect our bowels. That's going to affect our, our, our ability to process toxins because they're not going to be functioning like they should just because of the physical stress that we're placing on in that position, but also the neurological stress. And by that, I mean, so the brain, you mentioned it, the brain controls everything in the body. All If I asked you and the audience, what controls all the functions of the body, whether it's your metabolism, whether it's your, uh, you know, your breathing, what your digestion, it's your brain. So now the brain is connected through or, or to these organs, to your cells, to your tissues, through the spinal cord, which is inside the spine. And your spine should have a specific shape to it. From the side, it should have three curves. And that's why I do that. From mm -hmm. front to back, we want to be straight up and down, not like a nice column. And if we get off, well, now it's going to affect the nerves. It's going to affect the spinal cord inside the spine. If we're in this position, it's getting stretched, it's getting strained. Mm -hmm. So now it's cutting down that energy, those signals, that communication from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. And that's one of those interferences, one of those obstacles that we talk about. So those are, again, a simple solution. And I'll, I'll give one right now because I'm going to save another one for the end for that one thing I want everybody to do. Okay. But most people have a phone nowadays, right? Yep. With some sort of technology. And one of my biggest pet peeves, <laughs> and I, again, being a corrective uh, a spinal a, a chiropractor, so I got my phone here and I just got it here just so you can see this is instead of when you're on your phone, instead of having it down on your lap or down far away at your waist, for Pete's sake, bring it up. It's it's such a simple solution. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like right here, there. There you right go. There. You don't have to have it like this. You don't have to be weird about it. Like people think I'm just going to look weird. Personally, I think it looks weird when it's down like that, because when it's down and you're in that position, putting strain there, putting strain on your entire body, on not just your spine, but on your breathing, on the organs and doing it one time. OK, it's not going to be the end of the world. 
right? But doing it over and over again, chronically. And I will add this little tip for you, whether it's with the phone, this solution, whether it's, you know, sitting too much, whether it's you're not moving, whether it's whatever it is, put a timer on. Because you'd be surprised, especially when you, again, I'm sure everybody listening here has gotten caught on Facebook before, YouTube and watching YouTube. You say, I'm just going to go look up this one thing. And all of a sudden, an hour later, you're playing solitaire or you're doing something else on there. So put a timer on for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even if you don't think you're going to be on it that long. And that can can be your signal like, oh, I got to move. I got to get up. I got to stand up tall. Those types of things. Yeah. And when we move too, we're like, we're massaging all of those organs. They're getting a little bit of movement in there and, and our uh, lymphatic system can move too, because that doesn't have its own pump. Mm -hmm. And another way the brain communicates too is through the neurotransmitters, of course. Right. So that's another form of communication that can be thrown off if we're stressed and so on as well. So I I really love these like simple solutions and people may not be thinking that looking at their phone like this might have something to do with them not pooping. (laughs) Right. Right. And I, you know, that's where we started, but that's, again, these are the things that how the body is all connected now. And that's, okay. That's a great segue even into symptoms Mm -hmm. because whatever symptom you may be feeling it doesn't mean the problem is in that, like right there. Let's say, okay, so in the eighth grade, I had my first migraine headache. You know, I had headaches before, but even before that I was sick and my immune system wasn't, you know, I was sick four times a year, like two or three weeks at a time, just coughing and sneezing and congestion. And then it progressed, you know, I started getting migraines. I didn't know it was a migraine at the time. All I knew was I couldn't see out of my eye. My hand went numb. My, I, I couldn't speak type of thing. I remember the first one that I had, that's what happened. So you might feel it here, but maybe the problem is down here, or maybe it's even down farther in the posture or could be something in the gut that's chemically, my weak link was up here. Where my body felt that symptom was as migraines. Where my wife felt symptoms was her, you know, her her gut. If she had, again, that was more related because whenever she would eat dairy, her gut would blow. So that's it's almost like an, but it wouldn't be like immediately. Oh, geez, hit my hit my desk there. It wouldn't be immediately, and it might not come on right away. Yeah. So that's what we have. It's wherever your weak link is. And I know, don't go down the road of, please, of trying to figure it out. You know, because that leads into what we'll get into is like the whole mindset of it. It, it, if you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you, guess what? You're going to keep thinking about what's wrong with me. Why am I? Why am I not healthy? Why can't I heal? Why is this always? Why does this always happen? Well, now you're tuning your brain into what is wrong rather than. And I'm not saying it's it's not a natural thing to think that, but same thing with our posture. Same thing with our breathing. We need to bring awareness to it so then we can actually. Mm. nip it in the bud and practice these healthy living practices rather than just doing it one time and thinking, oh, I'm good forever. I'm Mm -hmm. fixed forever. So, you know, that's what I want to, another thing with symptoms is if you feel pain or, or, you know, constipation, we talked about that, or even the opposite, gut issues, shoulder pain, knee pain, low energy, allergies, again, where is the actual problem coming from? Because those symptoms are merely a signal that your body is not functioning correctly. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, aware, you mentioned awareness and how key that is. And the thing is, I'm sure anyone who's listening probably knows that they shouldn't be talking on their phone in their head. Like they, we know that's not good for us. We know it's not good for us to be sitting all day. We know we need to move. We know we need to have a good bedtime routine and all that. So it's not like we don't know these things. We know what is good for us. The problem is the habits, right? Creating the habits to 
implement these things that we know are good for us. So how, how do you help people with implementing these habits? Well, one of the, for the simple solutions. Well, one of the best ways is I love this. I love this, uh, these scales, basically asking yourself two things. One, their readiness to change scales, essentially on a scale of zero to 10, how important it, how important, whatever the goal that you want, if, if it's to get out of pain, like first you have to know what is the goal? What is your intention? Then you have to ask yourself, how important is it to that you reach this goal? Mm -hmm. So if it's a, so this is even a little mindset. I don't like the word hack, but a mindset tip is if you say, okay, it's a seven out of 10. It's important to me. Don't ask yourself, well, why, why isn't it a 10 out of 10? These are just simply finding out where to start. All right. That one is, that's one of those. Because the second one will tell you where to start and how simple to actually make it and how ready you actually are. So number one, how important is this goal to you? If you say it's seven out of 10, ask yourself, so why is it a seven and not a four? So why is it important to you? So you're already training your brain to think, okay, why is it important to me that I go for a walk? Why is it important to me that I, that I eat vegetables or I have a smoothie every day? Okay. The, all right. That's my goal is to have a smoothie every day, seven out of 10. That's my importance of it. Why is it a seven out of four? Because I know it's going to help me to stay healthy. It's going to help me to get down on the floor with my kids and my grandkids. It's going to help me to continue to travel with my spouse. It's going to help me continue to be productive in my work. It's going to help me right. look good, you know, whatever it is. Those are the reasons to do it, right? Instead yeah, of thinking about the, the reason why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the why behind it. And, and when we have a why, we're more, much more motivated, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you had mentioned, you know, we know this and, and exactly, we know this stuff, but yet we might do it for a few days, a week, maybe a month, mm -hmm. but then, okay, I'm not, I'm not completely better. I'm not, I didn't reach my goal. I, I didn't, oh man, I, I still feel this pain. It's not completely gone. Instead of looking at, let's see, I couldn't get out of bed for five days out of the week. And now I'm actually getting up. I'm only like maybe stuck in bed with pain or with a low energy once during the week. So I've, I've gotten so much improvement. And that's another mindset thing too, is, is looking at how far you've come. That's yes. part of the, the mindset system called review your direct or sorry, eliminate your limits. It's the one I'm certified in and it's review your direction. You know, how far have you come rather than looking at how far that you still need to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, and now I, I want to wrap a bow on that whole readiness to change because the next scale is after you ask yourself, why is it important to me or how important is it? And listing reasons why it is. Another one is on a scale of zero to 10, how confident are you that you can make these changes? Right. And then if it's a five, then you know, okay, we don't want to start if you're not used to going to the gym at all or going for a walk at all. You don't want to say, I'm going to walk an hour each day for seven days. It's too much for the brain to handle. We have to narrow that down. How about, you know, I'm going to go for a five minute walk today for the next three days. I'm going to go for a five minute walk because if you're at a five or you're at lower than that, or at four or three, if you try to do too much too soon, it's not going to be sustainable. And that's, that's the key. We want to sustain it, build it up. Now, let's like say you're used to doing things like that. And you're like, okay, I'm confident I can get to the, or I can make these changes. I'm at eight or nine out of 10. Well, then you can maybe go a little bit faster, but you have to be honest with yourself with what you're readiness to change your confidence level is. Mm -hmm. But even with that, let's say you're a five on that confidence meter. You don't say, well, geez, why am I not a 10? How come I'm not a 10? No. Same thing with the importance meter. You are saying, okay, why am I a five? Why do I think I can do this? Why am I a five? 
Why am I a five and not a three? So we consistently want to just reinforce that, reinforce our direction, reinforce where we want to go and why it's important to us and why we're confident rather than, you know, saying, why am I not there yet? Or why am I not at this point comparing? Again, we won't even get into the whole comparison thing. Mm -hmm. But I just want to, you know, wrap that one up with like, how do you know? Or how, not, or like how you asked, we all know this, but it's the habits. Right. Yes. How do we know it? What are the habits? It's keeping these simple reminders in place, you know, and people probably get sick of me saying the same thing over and over again, but they need to hear it because they're not getting it from their health care providers. Typically, they're not getting it from Facebook or the media or, or their, the news. They're talking about not these simple, everyday, healthy, natural solutions like food and nutrition. And, and they might be, but it might not actually be the the true health that we're talking mm. about. Those questions you've given people to say to themselves are really powerful because um, it, they're kind of looking inside themselves. And I think taking time for this reflection is really good. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I do as a coach with people, but people can do it themselves too, right? To sit down and just say, ask yourself, what do I need to do like for myself now? You have the answers. And then how, uh, so the first question was how confident am I? How, is how important, so whatever the goal how is, how important, how important is it is to you to, me? to accomplish it? And then the second one was how confident am I that I can achieve it? So yes. really, really good questions to ask. And then comparing not like, why am I not up here? But how, why am I already here? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Reinforcing that. That's health is, you know, it's, it, you know, it's not sexy. It's not flashy. It's not, you know, this, you know, the, the sizzle on the steak necessarily. We want some sizzle because we don't want our brain to get bored with it. We want to keep challenging ourselves, but we try to make it too complicated. I'm going to say too complicated too soon. Too, we try to make it too complicated too often and think there is something that is wrong with us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's our body's design. And you're going to maybe do some of these tips and strategies and solutions that I mentioned here that we talk about on our, uh, on the summit, the everyday solution summit that I have. And, and, you know, you're going to hear Jane talk about breathing and healthy breathing. And you're going to, and you're going to think, well, it's not working. You know, it's, you're going to do it for so long and maybe it does work and it will work if you do it consistently, mm -hmm. but you're going to come to a point where life is going to get in the way. And I encourage you just to, to keep with those simple and consistent solutions, these, these lifestyle strategies, these lifestyle practices, because no matter what happens in your life, that's always going to be the foundation. How you eat, how you think, how you move, how you breathe, how you, how you digest food, how you stand, all these things are intertwined together. How and that affects how our body and how your body functions. Mm -hmm. L love it, Lorraine. So let's just talk uh, for a moment about your summit that's coming up. What are the dates of the summit? It's August uh, 29th to the 30th. Sorry, 29th, 30th, and 31st. It's okay. uh, a three-day summit. And what I did is I wanted uh, the experts in their field, the healthy living experts, obviously that's why I had you on there, Jane, and wanted you to talk about breathing. And what are the things that we do on a daily basis that if we do them simply and consistently, they're gonna build the foundation for a strong, active, healthy life, functional life now and forever. So we can be active for whatever goals that we have in place, whether it's with our relationships, with our spouse, with our kids, with our our career, our our, our whatever it is we're trying to build. So health is the foundation for that. We get too far away from that way too often, these healthy living principles. And we want to just seek out the, the sizzle on the steak rather than just having the steak. Mm. All right. <laughs> you know, you said that health isn't, you know, talking about health isn't that sexy. Yet, if we and don't have our health, we can enjoy the sizzle in life, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and of course, anyone whose health has taken a nosedive, like, well, mine did, I know what it felt like. It's like, what? 
all these things I want to do, I can't do now. So you, we don't want to get there. <laughs> like I got really mm -hmm. far down because of all the stress and everything I was under. So if you're not there yet, but you're having a few little symptoms, like address that now, go to Ryan's summit, listen to what the people are saying, listen to these simple everyday solutions that you can do to help get, get move you down that spectrum. If you're, if you're far along the spectrum of, uh, you know, poor health leading to poor health, take, get you back to healthy on that healthy spectrum again. So, uh, really good. I shared the link to sign up for the oh. summit. It's free to watch for those three days. Mm -hmm. And I think you said later on, it will be available. Uh, possibly. Uh, possibly. Yes, okay. possibly. I don't have anything set dates for it yet. Okay. So I would definitely try to watch it as soon as right. possible. Yes. Okay. Watch yeah. the summit for those dates. It's totally free. And I know Ryan has got some great people on there. Well, I'm on there, but yeah. there's other great people as well because everyone that's on there is passionate about teaching people the simple ways to design, design a life of wellness, right? Which is right. what this is all about. So having said that, Ryan, I want, I want to ask you, I always ask my guests this, what's one action someone could take today to improve their health? Where is it? Here we go. Um, because this is the show is all about wellness by design, intentional living. So mm -hmm. what would you say, Ryan, simple step someone could take today? And I'm going to go back and like re say something or, or reframe it. Cause I said, you might start doing, especially this next thing I'm going to tell you about, and maybe you don't feel like it's working right away or, or, or you say it's not working. It is working. You just might not feel it. It takes simple and consistent effort over time doesn't take force doesn't take hard work that's not what it's about it's about just showing up most of the time starting to build that habit so this is called and we've alluded to it even a little bit i call it count your wins and mm -hmm. i will say this it's not a gratitude you know I, i'm all for gratitude but when you're in a pit like with you jane when you were in that pit of your like the, the rheumatoid and it was hard for you to be grateful because, you know, grateful, like true gratitude requires emotion built into it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's if you're down on a level so far, whether it's mentally, physically, emotionally, it's hard to create that positive emotion. And we can say it, but it doesn't stick. Count your wins is different to where, again, you ask yourself, what is that goal that you have? Whatever it is, it could be with your health, with your wealth, with your relationships. And you're going to, in a notebook, because I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down or, or, or speak it because we need that reinforcement to the brain, that repetit, repetition to the brain. Mm -hmm. So I want you to write down every, so think about that goal. And in the last 12 to 24 hours, what is every action that you've taken leading towards that goal? So it's things that you've done. It's finding the evidence of the things that you have are, that you've done, not necessarily being grateful for something that hasn't happened yet. So you're again reinforcing what it is that you did. So if I have a goal to, let's say, dunk a basketball again by the time I'm 50 years old. <laughs> All right. So now, again, that's three years from now. So now I would say, all right, what did I do today? that helped me do that. Well, I did my morning mobility. I did my, I did my workout. And you, the more specific you are, the better. I really did a great, I got a massage today. I, I laid on my spinal blocks to help make me more mobile, more, more uh, to, to prevent any injuries or to help my body recover. That's what I'm talking about. But I would write it if I actually did it. No win is too small. All right. right. It won't seem like I, you know, if you're trying to eat more vegetables, if you're trying to have a smoothie every day, if you're trying to have a salad every day and you don't like ve vegetables, well, don't try to eat a salad every day. Say I had a salad or I had like a, a small salad today with a few cucumbers or whatever the, the favorite uh, vegetables that you have. And reinforcing that instead of looking at the goal that you want to reach and saying, well, I'm not there yet. What did I do today that led me towards that, that I actually accomplished today? And that is the most immediate way where your brain starts to rewire. It's not going to be 
instantaneous to where you do it one time and you never have any problems again, but it's bringing awareness into those. Rather than your brain focusing on what you didn't do, now you're focusing on what you are doing. Mm, love that. It builds confidence. I was thinking about, as you were saying that, it, like if someone say was constipated and one of the ideas is to drink your half your body weight in, you know, as ounces in water every day, then your wink could be, well, I, you know, I had a glass, I have a glass of water when I first woke up this morning, even if they didn't get to their full goal, it could be, I had a glass or I had two glasses or I had three, whatever it is. It's just recognizing the win, letting our brain know that's important. And then it, it helps the brain um, remember like to do that goal or work mm -hmm. towards that goal the next time. Re I really love Ryan, how you bring the brain into this. So really, mm -hmm. really smart. And I just okay. need to say that's beautiful. I, I love that example because you're focusing on the, the water drinking and not the result. Cause even if you didn't go to the bathroom, even if you are still constipated, don't focus on the result, focus on the action that you're taking. That's mm. beautiful. Love, love, love that. Okay. Is there uh, anything we haven't covered that you want to make sure the audience hears? No, I mean, I think they have enough to go on, but just remember, I just want to leave you this, be your own guarantee for your health and your life. I send out a daily-ish uh, newsletter, uh, email. I, I don't, again, it's not, it's basically one little thing each day. It's more of an inspiration type thing. So if you want to sign up for that, you see the people who've, you know, who, You'll as you scroll down, you'll see the people, what they say and, and how it's helped them. So just go to drwolfert.com. The link is, I'm sure, in the notes here. And that's it. I keep it simple and consistent. Keep it simple even on my website. So do that. And then you'll have basically daily inspiration. Perfect. All right. So, so you mentioned your website and that's in the links. Are you, are you on uh, Instagram, Facebook as well? I would say Facebook is the main way. I don't do too much on Instagram. I do have a link, but I do more on Facebook than anything. Okay, perfect. All right, Ryan, this has been so good and insightful for people. And I really, really love these questions that you came up with to help people bring their brain on board because the brain runs the body. Mm -hmm. And also the brain helps us with motivation. And that's one of the key things as well. To do the simple things that are really yes. going to shift our health is what we do, mm -hmm. the simple things we do on a consistent basis. So thank you for everything that you're doing, Ryan. Thank you for being such a, a bright light in this world and shining that for shining the light on these things for people and having a daily inspiration. That's commitment. So thank you so much for that work that you're doing. Oh, thank you, Jane. And thanks to the listeners for being here today. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next episode of Wellness by Design. Don't forget, you can share this with someone who needs to hear it. Simple steps can change your life. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.